here you got your model space which is where we do the um, modeling obviously and then down here to cam now when you're doing cam the very first thing you want to do and I've already done some over here so I'll just uh, get rid of these start from scratch so you'll start and it'll look like this and you need to start with a new setup so go up here to setup go to new setup and then you've got your options here now in these little boxes you got tabs at the top so setup operation type uh, we've got milling turning or mill turn or cutting and uh, if you hover on any of the um, selections in here, you'll it'll show you one of the nice things about Fusion 360. It will show you what they mean. So um, I think we're doing milling is what I've been doing. I guess cutting might work, um, but I read, I've been picking milling. Uh, work coordinate system. You can change the way it is. Uh, the X, Y, and Z. Um, I've been making sure I do it in my model space the way I want it to show up seems easier. I messed with these the first time and had some problems. So I recommend uh, trying to get it set up so that when you click on the front, Z is towards you, pointing at you. Um, and that seems to make it easy to translate to cam. I don't know if that's right, people, but whatever. <laughs> and then model. And it should, it'll pretty much auto-select. But if you come down here and choose this, it'll show you that it's already selected that body as what we're going to model. So that's right. So then we're going to go over here to stock. And we're going to choose our stock. Now, this is a half inch thick um, piece that I set. And this is going to show the stock. And they're going to just make a relative box that's as big as that. Now, if you want to, you can change these to make it a fixed size of your own choosing. You can you know, make it a sheet of plywood or whatever you want to do. But it doesn't seem to change the operation. So I tend to leave those alone. <clears throat> the offsets here do matter. Um, the side offset. Oh no, I'm sorry. I tend to leave these alone. Uh, but when you go down here is a great place to just make sure that your depth is right. Here it says 0.54 inches. That's half an inch for what I have is my thickness there plus their 0.04 offset for the top. So they add a little thickness there. So um, I think I'm going to reduce that. I wonder if that's been a little bit of my first cut being so shallow. Problem. Oops, I just did that. I didn't mean to do that. So we got to go back into that. Okay, so stock. We got that. And then post. Don't need to do much here. You can change the name, what it's going to insert in your program number, which you'll have another opportunity to do that. So I guess I was okay with that. So there we go. So we got a setup there. So now I've got the setup selected as active. <clears throat> so now we're going to make our tool path. And we do that by going up here to 2D. And we're going to go 2D contour. Okay, now here's where we have five tabs at the top and a lot of selections within each one. I'm just figuring my way through all this. I don't know anything about this in the real world, so I'm probably doing it wrong, but here's what's been working for me. So start with your tool. Um, it'll give you the library here, and I've just been choosing the 1 8 flat end mill, which matches what I'm cutting with. There are quarter inch ones as well. And then I've been modifying my feed right here down to 20 um, just because we were working through accuracy issues and I felt comfortable there. I may speed it up later, but that's what I've been doing for now. Spindle speed and all of these um, things are a function of the bit that we chose. There's coolant. I just tend to disable that. And uh, I don't know if it matters, but there we go. So now we're going to go to the next one. And this is the contour tab. And this is going to... Um, have us choose what contour we're going to cut. So we choose this contour, which is the top, and you want to zoom in and look at this little arrow. So we're cutting on the outside line. If I click this, now it's on the inside. If we wanted to have the line and the stencil there. So <clears throat> there's that contour selection. If there were multiples, you just select them on and it'll chain them automatically. Okay, so stock contours, I don't use that. 
um, tabs. This is where you can set your tabs up if you need your if you'd like your part to have tabs. They automatically uh, default to these settings, and it'll automatically set them at certain distances. So, for instance, here we could put in every three inches, and if we zoom in, we'll see them here. So, they these ones are an eighth of an inch, 0.125 wide by 0.03125 in height. So I'll just leave those there for now. That seems to work. Um, so I'm going to close that one. We'll look at rest machining. I tend to not use this. This uh, limits the operation to remove material that a previous tool could not remove. So we don't have that. Wrap toolpath, that's for cylindrical toolpaths. Tool orientation. Um, controls three and two axis program and I haven't used that either so okay next step is heights this one gets complicated so you'll see when I click on it there's one two three four five heights here that we need to set and if you look at this you'll see them represented here feed retract top clearance I like to look at it from the bottom there and then you'll see them here and what I've been doing, the retract height default is 0.4. I set these to 0.2. You just saw that line lower. Feed height 0.2. That's if we had a feed setting. Now top height. <clears throat> okay, whoop, I didn't do that right. These uh, these are offset from what they're referenced to. So I set it at 0.02, but I did not set it. They have it defaulting. To from the retract height, so that's going to end up being retract plus clearance. So I don't like to do that. I like to go from stock top, and I remove the offset of stock top, so that should actually be two tenths of an inch off the stock top when it goes up to clear. Same with retract height, stock top two tenths. Feed height, I want to change that. They want it to be from the top height. I'm going to change it again to stock top. You gotta pay attention here. This will really trip you up with the z-axis. Top height. This is the top of the cut. So top height sets the height that describes the top of the cut. So we go stock top with an offset of zero inches, and that's the top of the cut. Bottom height is the bottom of the cut, zero inches. They're saying from the selected contours. And again, what I like to do here is go stock bottom. We go back. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go from stock top so I know how deep I'm going. And I'm going to go negative 0.54. And you can see my blue line here just moved to slightly deeper than the wood. <clears throat> Okay, so what I did there was the bottom height, which is the bottom of the cut. I set it at referenced from the stock top, and I as far down as I wanted my cut to go. So half an inch, 0.5 for the thickness of the wood, plus 0.04 to make sure I go all the way through. So that was bottom height, top height, top of the cut from stock top zero, feed height from stock top 0.2. Retract height from stock top 0.2, clearance height from stock top 0.2. Okay, seems like we're done with that. So we're gonna go on to the next tab. Passes. Okay. Here's where we're gonna set our number of passes and depths and roughing and feed passes and, and that kind of thing. So tolerance closer than we care about. Here's where we set which direction we go, clockwise or counterclockwise. Climb milling goes clockwise, conventional milling goes counterclockwise. I've been going climb milling, but you guys were going counterclockwise, conventional milling. So I'm gonna to change to that, and we'll see how that goes. I don't tend to mess with these minimum cutting radiuses. I think I might have preset them to zero uh, finish feed rate is 20 because I changed that um, but I'm not going to use a finishing pass and we'll get to that in just a sec so most of these you don't need to utilize 
So, roughing passes. This is roughing in from the side. This is not the depths. So I tend to leave that one unchecked. We don't do any roughing passes. Multiple depths, I do. So depending on what the material is and what my bit is, if it's a quarter inch bit and wood, you're gonna go bigger. If it's, I've been using eighth inch bits and plywood, they're smaller or in aluminum, even smaller. In this case, I have uh, 0.04, so we'll change that. Let's go 0.15, seems like a reasonable amount. <clears throat> so that's a roughing step down. And I only use the roughing step downs so far. The other option is to add in finishing step downs, which you would do by checking the box uh, down here. My, this one says rough final. I would uncheck that, and then we would have finishing step downs, and you would set that here. They have zero, zero, eight, so eight thousandths. Um, and you would, idea, you know, depending on your material and what you're cutting with, you could set that to less, and you could do a finishing step down. So. I'm going to leave that as is, we're going to do multiple depths, we're only going to do a rough final, and then you can set how it orders them, I like to order by islands, you know, you could uncheck that and it would move on if you have multiple tool paths within this project. Stock to leave, I did not use that. Smoothing and feed optimization, I did try both of those, that was back when we were still having troubles with the translation. Uh, from the post processor, I didn't have any luck with them, but uh, maybe in certain situations they'd be useful. Okay, so all we did here was mainly set up our multiple depths to make sure it passes. And one thing that's really neat about this, um, well, we won't see it yet, but when we render this, we'll see those passes on the side there. Okay, last is linking. Now, linking, you're going to say, okay, that's just about if we have multiple tool or multiple parts and we're going to link them together. And that's true. But here's what was tripping me up for a long time. On this page is this keep tool down section, and it was it was checked, so that'll mess up your Z badly. And then here's your safe distance and your lift height. So we already did five Z height corrections on the height tab, but over here there's two more, and I think they matter. So I set these to the same point two and point two and they don't like that for the lift height oh because it's larger than the tool diameter so 0.125 and that has more to do with I think pocket cutting and linking but I'm leaving it I don't okay and then here's lead-ins and transitions and this is where those feed lead um, speeds <laughs> were coming into play so you want to uncheck these at least I want to uncheck these you might not lead in lead out exit I'm not doing that Pre-drill positions, entry positions. You can set your positions here, um, but I'm not gonna bother. I'll let it default to choose those. So, all five tabs are chosen. Now, up here, I'm gonna click OK, and you'll see it render a new set up here. There'll be a little percentage as it renders, and then it'll either give, say it's OK, or it'll give me warnings. So here we go. So there we go, 0%. And I don't have any warnings. And now you get a little yellow sign, a little red sign here if you have warnings. And if I zoom in here, you can see it's going to take three cuts, and there are my tabs. It looks good to go. So you want to check it out, make sure it looks good. If it looks good, you can go up here and you can simulate. Okay, if you do that, there's other options in here. You can show the tool, you can not show the tool, tool path, not show the tool path. And down here is play. And when I was first learning what I was doing, I would come in here and make sure that it was going at the right depths. And you can see it is there. So that's pretty useful. Okay. Close the simulation. So here's our contour here. Now, if you had multiple parts, you can do them as individuals, and then you can just output from setup and it'll do it all as one file, or you can output them individually. In this case, I'm just going to output from the part tool path because I just have the one. So I'm going to right click here and go to post process. You can also go up here and post process in actions, but if I do it here, I know that I'm just selecting that one part and not the whole setup. So I go to post process, 
And here we are. So the configuration folder, this is where the configurations are stored. And you're going to download the uh, new updates from Fusion 360 by going to their library. And what I choose is grbl.cps generic gerbil. So uh, that's a setting from within all of these that you can choose that we've been using for Maslow. We're hoping to get our own, but we don't have that yet. Output folder, I've chosen my own uh, design and C folder. It'll default to somewhere where you'll never find it. <laughs> you will, but it's hard. Okay, here you can change the name of what the file will do. Will change. Um, I'm just going to put my name and my date here, uh, so I know which one I got. And that's it. There's some stuff in here you can select, but I haven't been doing it. You can uh, turn on and off G28 and different radiuses and speeds, um, but those don't seem to matter for me. So you hit post. It'll open up the folder and ask that you want to save it there with that name. Save. And you're done. So that's it. That's how I got through uh, getting a design from Fusion 360 on uh, to cut in Maslow. So hopefully that helps some of you guys. I know there's a lot of that that's wrong. I don't know what I'm doing. But uh, well, I've been hammering at it for weeks to just try and get it to cut. And I think we finally got there. So hopefully that will help some of you as well. Alrighty. Thanks for watching.